G'day, this is Mr. Thompson, and I'm going to show you how to model your truss design in Inventor. Now, there are a few stages to this. Uh, the first stage, uh, I'm presuming you've already done, is to draw or hand draw a sketch. Um, so I'm, a, I'm presuming you've already got that. The next stage, which is what this video is about, is how to create a wireframe of your truss. Uh, then we're going to go on and uh, convert that wireframe into an assembly um, which will be created out of I-beams. Um, so that's going to be looking pretty realistic. And then after that, there's a couple more things. How do, how do we create a professional drawing um, from our assembly uh, with dimensions and uh, all those conventions? And then also, how do we do stress analysis? So Inventor has a, an inbuilt stress analysis or truss analysis tool which we'll use. All right, so let's get started doing our wireframe. Now, if you do, if you are building something in Inventor, the first thing you want to do is create a project. So, because uh, of course, if you create parts and assemblies and drawings of all, all of the same sort of uh, mechanism or, or mechanisms that all belong together, uh, you want them all in the same folder. Uh, and Inventor does that pretty nicely. If I go to File, Manage Projects, um, then I can, you can see these are a bunch of um, projects that I've done previously, uh, but I'm going to create a new project. So down here, I'm going to click on new, a new single user project, and I'm going to call it, let's call it uh, Trust Bridge, Trust Bridge, like that. And you know what? It's going to uh, create a folder for me. Um, and in fact, you should click on this browse here and make sure the folder goes somewhere, select a location that's like a network location, not on your computer, so that when you log on to another computer, uh, you can still access your files. So I'm gonna click on finish here, and it's going to say that the path doesn't exist, that's okay, it's gonna create it automatically for me. Okay, so there's my trust bridge. So um, if I'm working on another project, I might come and work on my CO2 racer for a while, uh, and when I want to work on my Trust Bridge, I just come into that File, Manage Projects, and I'll double click on Trust Bridge, and then I'll be uh, in that folder. Okay, done. All right, um, let's create our Trust. So I'm going to go File, New. Now I'm not going to click on these guys here. I'm going to click on New up here. Uh, and that gives me a bunch of options here. Now, um, you can see already we can create parts assemblies, drawings, pre or presentations. We're going to create a part first, but I'm not going to use these ones here. If I use the standard part, it'll use inches and feet and pounds and horrible things like that. So if I click on this little twisty here and open up metric, uh, and let's use standard millimeters. Actually, I don't really want millimeters, but I'll change it to meters in a minute. I'll show you how to do that. So double click there. And here's our new part. We haven't, it's empty. We haven't done anything yet. All right, let's straight away, let's go to Tools and Document Settings and Units. And we're going to change our lengths to meters. Uh, everything else there looks pretty good to me. Mass in kilograms. All right, so let's go OK. Um, now, uh, normally when you create something in Inventor, you usually start with a 2D sketch and then convert it to 3D. So let's let's start with a, uh, a, a 2D sketch. But to do that, I'm going to first click on 3D model and then click on this section here that says start 2D sketch. So click to start 2D sketch. Um, which plane do we want to draw on? Well, I'd like to draw the side on view of my bridge. So I'm going to draw on the YZ plane. So I'm going to select that plane and there we go. Now, um, I'm going to draw a line first. Um, I'm going to just do the base of my bridge. So I want my bridge to be 30 meters. Um, so let me just type 30 there. Uh, actually, let me show you what I did. Um, I clicked on line, then I clicked and released here. Then it came out here and I hovered over that X axis and it sort of, it snapped to, to the right spot. So you can see if I move this here and it, it will snap to that X axis x-axis when I'm close. So that's good. So now I'm going to type, um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to click there uh, and then escape. So I've got a line there. Now I'm going to dimension that line. I could have dimensioned it while I was drawing, but um, I think this is probably easier for the demonstration. So if I click on dim dimension and now I click on that line that I drew, 
So I clicked and released, and now I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. And at the moment, my line's only two centimeters. <laughs> okay, I want it to be 30 meters. So 30, um, I changed my default units to meters, so I can just type 30 and then hit enter or click on that. And there we go. Um, it's gone off the page. So if I click on this icon here, zoom all, then that shows me the whole line, 30 meters long. Actually, you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to grab that dimension that I just did and I'm going to drag it down like that so that that dimension is and click there. Ah, oh, it doesn't like that. Okay, escape. <laughs> now I'm going to drag and click that dimension. Okay, so it's just so it's underneath the line, not on top of the line. Uh, so what I did then here, I hit escape so that I wasn't doing another dimension, dragged the dimension and released it. All right, um, I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll out a little bit, just so I can see a bit more. And I'm going to draw the I'm going to draw the outline of my truss. So I'm going to click on line. I'm going to start here. I'm not worrying about dimensions at the moment. I'm just I am going to make sure that this line is horizontal. Okay, and then I'm going to click down to here. Now that's not properly dimensioned yet, and it's purple, which means it's not properly dimensioned yet. So if I hit escape now, so I'm not drawing lines anymore. Now I come and click on dimension, and now that's 30 meters, and I want my truss bridge is going to be made of one, two, three, four, five, six different sections. So each of my sections is going to be five meters. So this dimension here, click there to there. That dimension there is five meters. So five. Okay. And can you, all right. Now the other thing I want is I want my height. So I click on dimension again. I want the height from that line there. So click and release up to that line there, click and release, come over here, click there. I want that height to be 10 meters on my bridge. Now, can you see how these two lines now have gone black? That's because those lines now are fully constrained. I've given Inventor all the information it needs to know exactly where they go. Uh, let me just escape. I'm just going to fix that up. Okay, good. Now this one here is not fully defined yet. I need to add another dimension there. So if I click on dimension again and say between that point and that point, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to do a, a dimension like that, a horizontal dimension. I'm going to make that five meters as well. Okay, so now that whole shape is gone black. It's fully defined. Let's add some, uh, some of the members in the middle of the truss. So I click on line. I'm going to hover until I find the midpoint. There's the midpoint of that line. Come down vertically. It snaps to there. Click there. Okay, good. I'm going to do the same here. Click, hover there, and uh, click and click over here. Click and click. Okay, they're all black. Now I need to do these ones in the middle. So if I click here and here, oh, that line's purple. Uh, I'll show you why in a minute. I'll do this one here to here. Now that's purple because we haven't told Inventor exactly where to put that line. I tried to draw it in the middle, but it's not exactly in the middle. To make sure it is exactly in the middle, I'm going to click on Dimension. And I'm going to say the distance between that line and that line there is 5 meters. Enter. Now that line is black. It's fully defined. Um, actually, let me show you something that can go wrong. If I try to dimension from there to there, it gives me an error message. Yeah, so I cancel that. And you know what? All I'm going to do is I'm going to go, well, it doesn't like dimensioning from this middle line. Uh, let's go from this line to this line instead. And that's five meters. Okay. Oh, it likes that. Okay. All right. We're nearly there. Uh, now I'm doing a how bridge. So that means I'm going to have uh, some cross members that are going to go from that point to that point like this. They're going to be sloping down and out like that, down and out like that down and out like that. There we go. And they're all black because I drew them between points that have already been fully constrained. Okay. Um, I'm going to finish my sketch. Done. And I'm going to zoom all so I can see it. And before I do anything, I better save it. Eh? So I click on save and I'll call this uh, truss. In fact, I'll call it 2D. Uh, actually, no, I'll call it truss. Um, so save that. Uh, that sketch is only 2D, but I'm going to make it 3D in a minute. 
All right. Now, I want to do that again, but I want to do that another one of them. Um, but of course, as you've probably guessed, I don't have to do another one. I can just um, I can just take a copy of that. In fact, even better than take a copy, I can sort of project a live image of that onto another plane. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up here. I'm on 3D model. I'm going to go plane, and I'm going to create an offset from plane. What does that mean? That means, uh, so I've clicked on that. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click on origin. Open that up, and you can see it shows me my three planes. And the YZ plane is the plane that I drew my original sketch on. So if I click on that, then it's going to create another plane at an offset from that. So I want my offset to be, I'm going to go 6.5 meters, because I want my bridge to be at least 6 meters wide, and the members are going to take up a bit of space. So uh, I'm going to make it 6.5. I'm going to click OK there. And so now well, I've got a plane. I haven't got another truss yet, but I've got a plane. Uh, and now I can put that a copy of that truss onto that plane. Here's how I do that. Uh, I'm going to start a 2D sketch. This time I'm going to put my sketch onto that plane that I just created. Uh, I'm going to zoom all so I can see everything. Now, um, I don't have to draw it all again. I'm not even going to cut, uh, copy and paste. What I'm going to do is I'm going to project geometry. So if I click on project geometry and then I select that truss bridge that I just drew, select it and then click finish. Do you see how it went yellow? It went yellow because now that yellow line tells me that uh, that's part of my sketch. That yellow is part of my sketch, but it's a copy of uh, the geometry that I just projected. See how that back truss now is projected onto the plane? Okay, so finish sketch. And uh, if I want to, I can go home and have another look. Okay, so now I've got my original truss and I've got my projected truss. And the good thing about doing it this way is if I change that height, say to 10 to from 10 meters, if I change it to 12 meters, then this automatically changes to 12 meters as well. So it's sort of like a live copy. Uh, so it's a really good way of doing things. All right, now I need to, actually, you know what? I don't want that plane to be visible anymore. So I'm going to come here and find, oh, you know what? This could get messy. I'm going to start naming things. So that sketch there, that was my original truss. So I click and click again, and I'm going to call that my back truss. Um, is it back? or front, or left, or right, I don't know. I'm going to call it back, and I'm going to call this one here. Click and click again. I'm going to call that my front truss, just so I can see what's going on. All right, now that work plane, um, you know what? I don't even want to see that work plane anymore. I'm, I, I, so I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to turn the visibility off. Okay, so now the truss is still visible. Uh, that projected image is visible, but the work plane's gone. All right, I want to play, create my deck, so I want to put some cross members across there. So that's going to be another sketch, and that sketch is going to be down on the bottom there. So if I go start 2D sketch, uh, which plane on, I want to use the, which plane? That one there, the XZ plane. Okay, so I click there, and then zoom all so I can see everything. Now, uh, I'm just going to use my mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. Now, I'd like to draw some lines down here. So if I click on here, now I want those lines, if I just scroll down here, I want those lines to line up exactly with those points. But the problem is, those my mouse is not snapping to those points. Those points aren't in this sketch. That's the problem, because I, I, my points won't be exact, and that's going to stuff everything up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a project geometry again. So if I click on project geometry, now I'm going to click on the points that I need in my sketch, because remember, I want to connect... I want those bottom lines to be connected there to there, there to there. So I'm going to click on all of those bottom points. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And come over here, these ones as well. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. That one, that one. So now all of those points are projected into my geometry. So if I, um, if I go escape, so I'm not projecting any more geometry and have a look. Uh, so if I scroll in there, can you see those yellow points there? They're now part of my sketch. So now I can use them in my sketch. So now if I come over here and click on line, I can uh, now my mouse snaps to that point that I projected. Snaps to there and there. And then I'm going to go escape, do another line, 
snap from there to there, escape, and escape. All right, finish sketch. And you can see now, if I click on it, now you can see, if I scroll around a little bit, yeah, you can see that I've got uh, those members on the bottom. All right, we're almost there. I want to do those members on the top. So uh, let's do that. Uh, again, I want another plane. So plane, I want an offset from plane because I want to take that bottom plane and I want, an, I want another sort of copy of that plane shifted up to the top, offset up to the top. So I've clicked on plane, I've clicked on offset from plane, coming over here, which plane? That's the plane that I want to offset from. So I click on that and 10 meters tall, my bridges. So I'm going to type 10 there. Okay, like that. There's my plane and I want to do the same thing I did before. Um, so I'm going to, where am I? Ah, do a sketch. So start 2D sketch. Whoop, 2D sketch on that plane there. Okay, zoom all, probably zoom out a little bit. In fact, I'm just going to rotate it a little bit so I can see what I'm doing better. Okay, um, so I'm still drawing on that uh, work plane. And I need, again, I need those points in my sketch. So if I go project geometry and I select that point, that point, just the top ones this time, that point, that point, and that point. And then oh, well, let's just rotate this a bit more so I can see a bit better what I'm doing. Okay, so that point, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, um, so now I should be able to draw lines. In fact, I just want to, yeah, okay, so I can see better what's going on now. So I'm drawing lines, I'm drawing from that point there to that point there, escape. So now if I finish sketch and click on my little home button so I can have a look. Okay, I'm almost done. That's pretty good. Well, I'm done, but I just need to tidy this up a little bit. Firstly, uh, let's name that there. That's my deck. Yeah, that's the, that's the sketch from my deck, not my desk, my deck like that. And that sketch there, well, that's my, what am I going to call that? Top or roof or something. Okay, uh, I don't want this work plane visible, so let's right click and turn the visibility off. And you know what? I don't even need those dimensions there anymore. I don't really want them anymore. Uh, they're, all, they're still there in my sketch. Uh, but so if I go back to my original truss, my back truss, right click and I can turn my dimension visibility off like that. So if I ever went back into that sketch, if I double click on that sketch, those dimensions are still there. Uh, but when I come back out of the sketch and I'm looking my part, at my part, I don't really want all those dimensions there. All right, that's pretty good, I think. Um, oh, now one other thing, what's that? I've got another, I've got a little point there. Let me just edit that sketch there. Oh, that's, yeah, I don't need that point. I'm just going to delete it. So delete, gone. Okay. Don't know how. I must have just projected another point that I didn't actually need. So, uh, so I just deleted it just to tidy things up a bit. Okay, so there we go. There's our wireframe. Um, and that is now ready to turn into a solid 3D truss with I-beams. But that's the next video.